Hi everyone, Toothany Flute Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new album from Andre 3000, New Blue Sun. This is a new LP from enigmatic rapper, singer, producer, flautist, Andre 3000, at one time known for being one half of the legendary hip hop duo Outkast. And outside of some amazing features, uh, he's been pretty inactive musically for almost two decades now. But he's finally doing what fans have been chanting for pretty much all this time, solo album, solo album, solo album. And this thing dropped almost as suddenly as it was announced with like a week of lead time. And you know what? It's not what anyone expected. Yeah, definitely not a rap album, instead a 90 minute uh, instrumental record where Andre would be playing among other things, flute. And creating these explorative pieces with an array of mostly California collaborators from the jazz and experimental scene, most key among them being multi-instrumentalist and producer Carlos Nino. Now, in the run up to this record, Andre did talk about how improvisational these pieces would be, saying he took inspiration from jazz greats such as Coltrane in preparation for this, which I'll say had me anticipating something that uh, was more along the lines of something that could be traditionally categorized as jazz, not so much new age or ambient music, but that's actually closer to where this album lands. With eight tracks, most of which are pretty expansive and range anywhere from three to 17 minutes and feature a wide palette of instrumentation and vibes, which doesn't exactly make for the most cohesive overall listen, but each of these pieces individually are pretty immersive in and of themselves, so that's saying something. I guess it's just a matter of whether or not I want to be immersed in whatever sound or energy a track is producing. Because when it comes to the 12 minute opening track, I would say only somewhat. Cause I do love the dusty mystical chord progression, the chimes, the cymbal swells, the uh, tooting little lead melody that pops in after a few minutes. <laughs> But all the super digital synth patches throughout the track do feel kind of dated and feel like the soundtrack to a Nintendo 64 game that dropped in the early 2000s. But still, I can't deny there is something to it, even if some of the improv passages that develop deeper into the song are sort of weak. There are even a few that sound a bit out of key for a brief moment, which is a testament to the fact that Andre really hit record on this stuff and let her rip, as I think the process of these pieces is more about the exploration than it is about the accuracy, the planning, the harmony, the precision. At the end of the day, it certainly is evocative if you're looking for something that uh, is going to make you feel like you're spelunking through a magical cave. The remaining tracks on this thing scratch different itches, though. Oh yeah, and by the way, the titles of these tracks are insane. With track two, there's some aesthetic overlap, the chords are airier and melt into each other more fluidly, and the sparse, stuttering, occasionally fluttering synth leads uh, don't really bring a whole lot to the table, as I think they're not trying to push the song too hard into any one direction. It's more about the stillness and the sense of place of it all, which I do get. However, as I listen to this, uh, the only vibes I'm picking up are like underwhelming yoga session. Track three is a huge change of pace though, as it sounds a lot more like a meditative spirit journey with some shamanistic drums repeating throughout much of the track and some wandering woodwind tones too. And once more, it is evocative at least for a time, but I think Andre and his collaborators lack either the chops or the cohesion to keep this energy up uh, with interesting nuances because by the midpoint of the track, the leads start getting really sporadic and kind of awkward. We also start hearing what sounds like very loud breaths coming through here and there. And then at, at one point they, they break out the rain stick, not the damn rain stick. Look, I have nothing against this genre of music. I just don't get why Andre feels the need to feed into its biggest cliches every once in a while. The rain stick is also a pretty major player on the fourth track here, though this song actually ends up being one of my favorites thus far. Just because of how unpredictable and open the whole thing feels on the free improv front, it is a multi-phase performance that is ambient in tone, yes, but there are so many interesting changes going on compositionally and chord progression-wise and melodically that it just kind of keeps me on the edge of my seat. And it's a welcome contrast from other spots on this record that feel like they're also heading into the unknown but going nowhere fast. Track six is even better, quite possibly the darkest piece on the entire thing, with some droning, unnerving tones layering up in the background, with some strange woodwind arpeggios sitting on top of that, just kind of spiraling over and 
over and over like a staircase going down forever. This piece really finds a good balance between repetition and progression. Meanwhile, the closing track, the longest song on the entire project, uh, goes back into territory that is more difficult to define because uh, simultaneously it is musical, certainly has progression to it, especially with that really beautiful and intense swell toward the very end. But by that same token, I feel like I'm uh, not so much listening to uh, a musical work as much as I'm existing in a place. I mean, this track may actually be the truest to its title on the entire album, because yeah, this one really sounds like you're entering into an otherworldly realm, or transcending this reality at the very least, which essentially is what would have really put it over the top for me. So while I wasn't head over heels for this thing, I will say for Andre 3000, it's an admirable shift. Unexpected, but still creative, surprising, and mostly intriguing. And I hope this album kind of opens up the floodgates for him to experiment and explore uh, instrumental music or whatever kind of music uh, into the future. Because certainly he does seem to have a passion for ambient music and new age stuff and uh, jazz and electronic music. But if he sort of pushed it a bit further and put some more unique and interesting spins on it, uh, I could see myself being blown away totally. Feeling a decent two strong six on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Andre 3000, uh, forever.